David Martin uh, is is going to be joining us here to be able to talk about um, crossing domain configuration management and a new way to think about POM and engineering. So I'm happy to be able to welcome Martin Ulrich to the the talk today. Uh, he's a POM architect with 25 years of experience in the area of POM methods and tools to develop electric electronics and vehicles, PDM, POM with a higher focus on process support and um, product lifecycle were some of his focus areas in the past. Martin's expertise includes systems and software engineering practices, product lifecycle management, model-based engineering, and product line engineering. So a wonderful skill set. Looking forward to uh, hearing your talk, Martin, and thanks for persistence and, and hanging in here and presenting to our, our OSLC community. So I'll, with that, I'll let it go and uh, welcome you to the forum. And Martin, we can see your screen, but I don't think I can hear your voice. Okay, can you hear now my voice? Yes, I can. Okay, cool. Thanks. And Eric, thanks for jumping in <laughs> for me having technical issues. So I think we're good to go. So, um, so today I'd like to talk about cross-domain configuration management. And I think this is really a good uh, sequence of the talks. So I think um, Eric was pointing out uh, that the um, um, OSLC standard needs to be established in the industry. And we really want to go for, uh, for that being Bosch. And uh, our focus today is on obviously OSLC configuration management. Now, as we talk about configuration management, um, it does not refer to the variability perspective of um, configuration management. It's more related to which, um, which precise uh, versions of the product are effective uh, over time. Now, cross-domain refers to that we want to have a configuration management system uh, which uh, is capable to manage all the engineering domains in, um, uh, that we have, like system engineering, like requirements management, like software engineering, and so on and so forth. So this is what we are going to talk today. And we think uh, with this approach that I'm going to present that we uh, have a new way to think PLM and engineering. While that, I'm going to talk about that in detail. So first of all, uh, let's look. Oops. Okay, so um, who we are being Bosch. So Bosch has um, uh, those business sectors uh, listed here. Um, so we Martin, are, are you flipping the charts? Because I, I still see the heading chart. Maybe it's my oh. problem. Mm. I, I, I was seeing the same thing around. I was just about to jump in and ask. Okay, sorry. Then I think I need to share again my screen. Just a moment. I hope that is the right screen. So is it, do you see the screen now? Yeah, now, now we see. Yes, we do. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. So, uh, okay. So here we see our business sectors and one of the uh, biggest one are our mobility solutions. And we have others also. In total, Bosch has 400,000 associates. And I think worth mentioning is that in engineering, we have like, 76,000 engineers and researchers. So we, we have a very big uh, engineering community. And um, now in this um, engineering community, um, we, and if we look at the working masses, which are established uh, today, still very broadly in engineering, Today, we are still kind of document-based. So what we did in the past, we have those big engineering communities and they optimize themselves each um, in the individual silos, let's say. So for instance, we have the architects, we have the verification and validation groups, we have the software engineers and so on and so forth. No, they're all optimized within their silos. And if we talk about the big product to be orchestrated, what we see happening is that the information is going back and forth. We are um, 
uh, shares or via mail or stuff like that. So what we end up is having um, inconsistent product description as well as, and I really like that, accidental complexity. Now, what we uh, want to do in the future, we want to uh, strive towards a more model-based approach. That doesn't mean that we want to digitalize everything in engineering, but that we digitalize those aspects which are really um, important in order to allow collabor collaboration between the different parties ending up with a common engineering model where we um, establish the essential complexity which is in, uh, needed in order to provide proper collaboration uh, capabilities in the organization and to have a consistent product description. And every, uh, all of those parties can contribute to the common engineering model. So this is our, um, the, the principal way what we want to do in engineering. But now let's focus uh, on what do we want to do um, about configuration management. Now what we see is that um, those networks which are pointed out here, they continuously change over time having a different version. So obviously configuration management in terms of uh, creating baselines, uh, understanding what is the actual branch that we're working on and stuff like that needs to be, uh, be very uh, transparent in the organization, which is not the case today. Also, what we see in the organization that we um, have multiple, of the, uh, multiple instances of those networks established in the organization, where we have uh, people who are responsible, for instance, for micro, uh, micro mechanic sensor, and they contribute the sensor to an ECU. So they would have their environment and uh, the ECU guys would have their environments. And now we even have those, uh, we need to even manage uh, those contributions across those organizations. Now that was, uh, we were able to manage that uh, uh, and we still are, um, but the power that we need in order to uh, fulfill that uh, all the requirements and um, to really document in the way that we uh, do our documentation gets more and more uh, um, um, does not seem to be the right way as the complexity of our products uh, is steadily increasing. So we have um, an increasing number of product decomposition levels uh, at Bosch that we need to face. Now, this increasing complexity is also reflected in the complexity of the organization. So we have uh, more organizations that work, uh, need to collaborate on a cross-domain and even on the cross-organizational level. Now, what we see is that, and we examined that, uh, examined that, that in the organization, uh, managing those configuration item lists which are required in order to, uh, to define those configuration. In a lot of organization, we find Excel really the predominant tool that is still used um, in order to, to handle those configurations. Ending up with a, a high degree of personal communication which is required in, in order to keep those Excels up to date. Actually, it's what we end up is that we update the Excels not every time, maybe, but definitely for, for instance, quality gates. But um, we should have continuous availability during engineering so everybody can understand what is the actual status of the development and to have it really transparent in engineering. So, um, so what we see, if we digitalize uh, the configuration management, we will have lots of benefits uh, listed down here. So, but it's not only about uh, configuration management, um, it's also, an, also a very important capability that we need to deliver at the end of the day, and that is also important for digitalization, is the traceability aspect. So we have all those engineering web products along the Wii model, and uh, we need to make sure in, in order to allow traceability 
that those um, um, work products in engineering, like um, logical architecture, links back to the functional uh, design. And uh, now the point is, as these guys continuously evolve over time and, it, in it, and at a different speed, um, it is not simply drawing a link from a logical architecture uh, to a functional architecture. It must be depending on the configuration context. And we need to provide the functionality to, uh, to allow link consistency and bi-directional traceability. Now, what, looking at the high-level concept of CDCM, what do we plan to do? So on one hand side, we still keep our bubbles, our silos in place. We don't want to change the world. I mean, we couldn't afford it. There is so much investment in all of those uh, implementations that we better don't touch them. So, but we, uh, we want to, uh, we want to structure those uh, silos, if you want, uh, by this gray box, which we want to introduce. And this is, at the end of the day, um, an engineering bill of material. And this one decomposes based on, um, uh, on one hand side, we have those cubes, which represent products. For instance, here we have a powertrain, or here we have an uh, engine controller. And uh, now those cubes are version independent. Uh, according to OSLC configuration management, this is uh, referred to the component. Now, then we have a version dependent object, which is um, in OSLC tongue, the configuration. And the configuration uh, consists of uh, con configuration items in, again, in OSLC tongue, that's the contributions to a configuration. Now we have two types of configuration items. One are um, representation of work products in the engineering. For instance, we could refer back to a system requirement specification indoors or doors next gen, or we could refer to an architectural model which is created in Kimio. Another type of uh, integration is we integrate a certain version of a product in the overall uh, configuration because that makes up the decomposition of the product. Now, if we install something like that, uh, we can uh, get uh, get rid of the um, uh, of those axles and uh, really uh, dig into the, um, the silos which we have today and whatever work products are defined here. But not only that, we can also bridge uh, from uh, requirements uh, management um, up, up to the product and from there provide the data to the digital thread, which is here uh, visualized based on our uh, holistic product lifecycle picture or pictogram. So we would register a twin for the product based on its part number. And we would, for instance, be able to provide then a service, a semantic service, which uh, says, OK, for this product, please provide me all the configurations. OK, I select one. And now for uh, this configuration, please provide all the work products um, that, is in the, uh, that are in there. And from there, I, for instance, can identify the requirement specification and I can drill down to the requirements. So what we really think from, uh, from Bosch perspective is that digitalization in engineering should always start with the digitalization of the engineering bomb, because the e-bomb holds all the artifacts and the work product in engineering together. Now, building such a system which um, uh, represents such, such a structure may not be a big thing to do. The big thing to do is that we have lots of applications out there that are used to manage those work products in engineering. We have uh, really quite a lot of them. Now, to really um, uh, to be uh, to really scale with such kind of an approach, we need to rely on standards. So this was um, a very quick finding at the very begin beginning when we thought about CDCM. So, and we searched for uh, appropriate standards and we found OSLC and OSLC configuration management. So essentially we 
uh, we took the standard and uh, put CBCM around. Also, that um, approach is very nicely suited in order to support the system engineering uh, methodology, which we established. So at, um, at Bosch, we decided to use the SPIES method methodology, which is at the end of the day, we decompose our products from the requirement viewpoint to the functional, to the logical and technical viewpoint level per level and then we uh, decompose to a black box again this will be another product and what we can do so we decompose level per level ending up at at the end of the day in a configuration hierarchy so uh, also this approach would nicely suit to the uh, system engineering approach now if we would have something like cdcm established we no longer uh, need to communicate uh, um, transferring all the engineering data. We can simply take a URL and a link basically to the configuration and say, hey, let's talk about this configuration. We need to change something here or uh, anything else. And everybody would have a good understanding of what we're talking about. At the end, a CDCM is fundamental uh, to the common engineering model and is a core aspect. Now let's talk about the architecture. And before we started to think about the architecture, we came up with some design principles. And I listed down here uh, some examples which are seen to be important from our perspective. So one um, design principle is modularity. So we don't want to end up having monolith, uh, monolith or vendor lock at the end of the day. Um, semantic of data is uh, pretty important, so we uh, want to ensure that um, at a certain point in our architecture, we are free of tool or we want to be tool agnostic in the communication in order to simplify the integration network in our organization. And we have other principles like single source of truth, uh, REST, so based APIs, open industry standard, and so on and so forth. Now, with those um, design principles defined, we came up with an architecture. So how is that architecture now made up? Uh, let's start on the client perspective. This is where the engineering work products will be created. So we ha have authoring tools like Rhapsody for uh, architectures, for architectural models or Cameo for the same thing. We have Creo for um, cut um, drawings or, um, uh, or cut objects. We have Supen, for instance, for layouts or schematics and, and so on and so forth. Now, the interesting uh, level that we're looking at is the model governance level. So this is the model that is used to manage all those um, work products which are generated uh, in from those uh, client or, um, and authorization or, and authoring tools. And now uh, this level is managing those, uh, those work products, providing hopefully an API access. And now the, and we have at Bosch more than 100 brownfield applications which we need to integrate. So we want to do that we are also seeing and uh, we want to establish then a component which is called cdcm cross-domain configuration management and from here we would then register to the digital twin um, provide the semantic apis as already sketched and from here we have uh, then um, basically a tool agnostic uh, um, interface layer and we could provide the data, uh, the, uh, really the um, business data to analytics platform, to engineering apps like low code apps and so on and so forth. Now, um, we see that OSLC tends to be more and more accepted in the industry, uh, but still, and we already talked about it and, and we heard it in the previous speeches, uh, that yet a significant number of tools need to be OSLC enabled. Now, um, as already mentioned, the architecture is really driven by OSLC. And um, so, and the most important standard here is OSLC configuration management, which perfectly supports this approach. 
And it's um, really the best suited standard which we could identify after intense research. So we spent uh, more than a year on checking out with uh, academia, with uh, all the tool vendors and um, a lot of other contacts uh, with Forrester and so on and so forth. Uh, we checked, do you know any better alternative? But there was nobody out there who could tell. So C, uh, OSLC and especially OSLC configuration management is the best suited standard which we could identify. Now, uh, what we would do, we would uh, now implement global configuration uh, on uh, the level of CDCN and we would implement, and now all of these tools need to support local configurations. So they need to adhere to OSLC configuration management. Also, what we need to do in order to allow traceability, we need to be able to interlink, uh, for instance, an architectural model, which is managed in um, uh, Teamwork Cloud uh, for Cameo models with DNG requirements. Uh, we are traceability links like um, this function or this um, uh, block implements a requirement. But now it's not just simply implementing OSLC core, it's uh, when uh, the link need to be under configuration control and the configuration context need to be selected. Uh, I think our Iran earlier talked about um, uh, config aware links and this is exactly what I'm talking about here. So OSLC configuration management is key enabler. Now looking at the architecture, um, how, uh, how do we see this architecture? So, and this is where I want to get back to what I stated earlier. So it's really a new way to think PLM in engineering because we reduce PLM to the EBOM. So CDCM will have a very atomic scope. So it's a very, let's say small component because the only cap capability which we will implement in a CDCM is configuration management, so to say the EBOM, and the product master data maintenance or integration, depending on how we uh, want to do the, uh, if we have other systems which are managing product master data. Yet out of scope, for instance, is content management. So because the content will be managed on the model governance layer, we don't take care on engineering workflows. Um, this would be easy to integrate to CDCM. Just at the end of the day, we need to set the status uh, as a result of the workflow. And uh, uh, also other components like federated search engines. So in our perspective, this really changes the way how we think PLM because we, uh, we digitalize the most important object in PLM, which is the EBOM and nothing else. Yet, so if we look at this, uh, so we uh, defined a business concept for this uh, system for CDCM and also the high level requirements and we derived them. And uh, we scouted the market if you find any appropriate solutions, uh, but we couldn't find anything. So that is seen to be an issue. So now, now we talked about this alternative and uh, what would be alternative, uh, what uh, we looked at this ar architecture. Now what would be alternative architectures and in, uh, architecture patterns uh, for, the same, uh, for doing the same job? So what we could do, we could replicate the data from one tool uh, to another in order to establish the link then in a target tool well, uh, this really doesn't adhere to our design principles that we don't want to uh, replicate data. This is not what we want to keep it lean. Uh, another option would be we could publish the data to a graph. Uh, so we would have an um, artifact in tool A here and an artifact in tool, in tool B. And we would publish it to a, a graph and then establish the link here. Well, that. Uh, we see that is a big uh, issue from configuration management perspective. How would you manage this uh, this trace uh, this link here, which is established in the graph, from a configuration management perspective? 
I cannot imagine how to manage that. So at the end of the day, we, uh, we really want to go to the direction of linked data. And this is from our perspective, the true norm. Looking into the details of linked data, uh, we still have two options. And now we get also again back to what Euron was mentioning. So what OSLC Core was uh, providing us in the past was having kind of, and I refer to them, static links. Why statics? Because they are not dynamic according to the configuration. So they are not depending on the configuration context. So having now OSLC conflict management in place, we have a new way of linking uh, artifacts uh, in the work products to each other. And now this really meets an, a major requirement in the industry, at least from our perspective, that is any artifact with his related links need to be under con configuration control. The link itself is, must be part of the overall model. So if you want to provide that, OSLC contact management is really mandatory in order to fulfill this requirement. So let's summarize um, where, what we've seen and what we plan to do. So from our perspective now, we invested three years in, uh, in this whole topic and we did so much investigation and, uh, and checked what are the architectural alternatives. Now we are really good to move forward and we decided to go the uh, OSLC way. So what do we want to do? Our primary focus at the moment is an OSLC-based tool chain for model-based system engineering, focusing on the requirements, the architecture, and the configuration management. The first thing which we need to do, obviously, we need to implement a CDCM system. We will not do that alone. We will do that in collaboration with an external partner. In addition, uh, because the OSLC integrations are not yet there in the market, so we see it really vital that we establish uh, the uh, capability to build OSLC integrations by our own. So, uh, and why do we need that uh, for sure? Because for instance, we have our own model governance applications, which we build being Bosch. I mean, for sure, we have a lot of tools which we buy from the market, but we also have tools which we build uh, on our own. So we need to have that uh, capability in-house and we need to gain the integration experience. But there are also other things, uh, and these are the ch uh, challenges that we face. So definitely uh, all the engineering tools, and now talking especially about those uh, tools uh, for uh, which I refer to being the governance layer or the model governance, all those tools, they need to support OSLC. And they need to support OSLC configuration management, OSLC core, and OSLC TRS. So what we really want to do, we want to motivate all the, uh, the tool vendors to um, support OSLC in the, um, uh, with, uh, with these detailed specification. So we, uh, we already start talking to all the tool vendors which are relevant for, our, for us, and these are quite a few. And uh, so uh, this is one way of uh, providing uh, OSLC support of engineering tools. We could implement our, the OSLC integrations by our, by our own, or we could uh, buy in OSLC integra uh, integrations from third parties. Important to mention here is that we also want to motivate to adhere to the design principles. Because just um, providing an OSLC integration will, at the end of the day, not do the job. We have a lot of non-functional requirements like performance, like scalability, like um, uh, stability, and uh, which all needs to be met. So it's not enough to simply support OSLC. Uh, also, those non-functional re requirements need to be met. And then we have a third point. Uh, a third point. Um, uh, we see also still um, issues on the OSLC standard, but 
uh, as mentioned, we're good to move forward, uh, but we need to take care also about the standard. Um, for instance, uh, the integration of the link index, which is a very important capability or architectural building block, which is required in order to have a performant a bi-directional uh, uh, link support in our architecture. So we um, need to integrate those link indices and uh, this is something that we want to put the focus on. So we, um, we will drive uh, this activity, but we would be really happy if you could support um, to face the challenges mentioned here. Having said that, i like to close uh, with, and I would be really happy if you can support uh, this activity. Wonderful. Thank you, Martin, so much for, for spending time and sharing your experience and perspective. Um, I know that that echoes many of the, the individuals that I've been working with in the automotive community as well, the need to be able to bring these tools together and the uh, importance of configuration management and, and both from, from having that uh, cross-domain configuration manager, but also the necessity for having these tools and these repositories um, support local configurations to participate in that. So I think that that is hugely important. Um, and and we're, we're running a little bit long on time, so I want to be able to make sure at least we get to one question in here, but um, then we're going to be able to jump over to um, our next presentation. So uh, the question that I'm going to pick out of this, and, and we can, can join into the Q&A uh, behind the scenes as well as answer those, um, is when you talk about that integration layer and that digital twin, uh, what component was that? Is that uh, what you're talking about in terms of uh, your index and linked index, or is that some other component in which you're doing analysis on above your CD? Okay, the, so the, uh, the the component which we're using for uh, establishing the um, what we call our integration layer is actually. Um, a homegrown application because we um, we really get into the business uh, also being Bosch in uh, to provide solutions also for that. So we have our own platform uh, to provide uh, to implement digital twins. Okay. Okay. Uh, wonderful. Well, thank you again for for sharing. Uh, I do encourage you to take a look at the Q and A to see if there's some of those um, that you can uh, add some other content on. If they get complex, I do encourage conversations to move over to Slack, both for uh, deeper discussions as well as um, uh, being able to save those. And so, so those that aren't joining live can be able to take a look at those as well. So, thank you so much. Appreciate that, and um, thank. Now's the time for us to be able to switch over to our next presenter. Um, and I think we've, we've had some technical challenges in the background still, but uh, I think we're, we're live and, and back with that. So 